Hey everybody! Welcome back to another episode of What Would You Change? We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I'm here with Papa Nugget, Monkey Feathers, and I am of course Loki. Howdy everybody. Hey, hey. Hola! Hello, hello. Uh, this week we are going to be going through Uncut Gems, the 2019 Adam Sandler movie. Uh, it was directed by Benny Safdie and Josh Safdie, uh, written by Ronald Bronstein, Josh Safdie, and I would imagine uh, Benny Safdie as well, yes. It is uh, with his, it says, with his debts mounting and angry collectors closing in, a fast-talking New York City jeweler risks everything in hopes of staying afloat and alive. Uh, of course, it stars Adam Sandler, as we've said, uh, Julia Fox, uh, Dina Menzel, Keith William Richards, who I don't know who that guy is but he plays a very important role palm clementeeth eric bogosian is in this the weekend is in this who's the basketball player i should know kevin that garnett. kevin garnett <laughs> kg yes apparently natasha leone does a voice on this tilda swinton does a voice in this also uh larry rats ratso sloman who plays man on street uh, Judge Her- Judd Hirsch is the other name, the notable name I'm looking in there. He, he does play um, Adam Sandler's father-in-law. But let's move on. Our thoughts. What did we like about this? There is one like that I have. And that is, I did like Howard's death. The idea that this character actually did it. He actually made money as he was betting all of everything that he had, he did it. And then for the movie, just to turn around and kill him. I actually liked that idea of it because it's not a traditional, oh, and now they are going to live happily ever after and run off into the sunset. He pissed off some people. They didn't like it. And they retaliated and shot him. Uh, That's probably the one main thing that I like is just his death scene and I mean yeah, but that's that's kind of everything in the movie too cuz that does happen to him earlier when he could have paid off one of his debtors but the debtor went and canceled a bet that he was going to win on like he would have won big on that bet yeah. not as big as he does at the end yeah i i i didn't necessarily have any expectation on this or like any hopes for it to be to be anything special i've just i've heard that it was good i hadn't heard anything else really about it but I don't know. To me, it was just kind of a week in the life of a scumbag before he dies. Well, yeah. Like, like it's, it's well, not. And, and that's something else. Cause I was thinking about this when I first started watching it was it didn't give you exposition or narration or yeah. text on a screen. It just threw you into it and you're slowly learning about, Oh, he's in debt to yeah. many different people. He's, I'm, yeah pawning all of these different items to other people. And so. So, I mean, Howard is a character um, like he's, he's, as you put a, a scumbag, but yeah. um, his life is very chaotic. Um, that changes moment to moment. Uh, I think they did a good job at trying to portray that uh, yeah. throughout the entire movie. I didn't think it made for a very enjoyable to watch movie, but I believe they yeah. did. <laughs> I believe they did a good job with his portrayal as a character. Um, and yeah. you, you really see how he's just, he's like always wanting like that, that next little bit. Like he's not ha- ever happy to settle with just accepting what he's got, whether it's good or bad. He's, he's always going to push it. Right. He's, he's got a basically a gambling addiction. Well, yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, that's the thing that they, that I was going to say that I kind of wish they had hit a little bit harder was yes, this is a gambling addiction. So he's never going to win because every time he's this, the smart decision is going to be in front of him. He's mm-hmm. never going to take it because yep. he's going to have to go for the big win. Um, and they, like they, they do show that very well. And I do appreciate the, they don't hold your hand throughout that. And cause there are some, some uh, things that he does where you're just like, why would you do this? This is stupid. Yep. But that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's the purpose of what they're trying to get across. So you're talking to, though, because there's the conversational style in the, the dialogue where it's not someone's talking and then another person's waiting. Like everyone's going on. Everything's going on when they're, you know, 
people in the background are talking and it's just it's this very chaotic yeah it's like a day in the life noise like like you said yeah and so you you just you you hear all of the kinds of things it's um real uh, like realistic right i mean there's mm-hmm. a, there's a scene in this one where his wife soon to be ex-wife because they again they never really yeah. they kind of hint that nothing's that it's over but not the paperwork kind of thing and they're still mm-hmm. putting on the appearances but where she's still wearing her bar mitzvah dress she still fits into it and everybody in the family is freaking out and he's trying to say well I'm, i'll go get the car i'll go get the car but all of them are talking at the same time same point in time and so you can't really hear what anybody says and so i i do like that style i just w- w- kind of was lacking for me in this like uh, it, I, I think it was a good it's, choice. It's like you said, where, where it's it, it it's good. It's done well. It's just doesn't make me enjoy the movie. Yeah, anymore. and I think it, I think it, so, that that style yeah. really fits into kind of what they're trying to portray with like just how chaotic yeah. his life is. Like it works. Yeah, but again, it just, yeah. it's just <laughs> if you don't like a cheese enjoyable? grater to your face, yeah. then you might want to look for another <laughs> movie. And that's the thing that, like, there's there's a lot of actors I like. You know, that's why I was, I was looking through the list and taking my time. Um, I really like Eric Bogosian. I like, you know, Judd Hirsch, um, who most people will know as uh, Jeff Goldblum's father in um, Independence Day. Um, and other people will probably know him as uh, the crime-fighting taxi in the TV show Taxi alongside Daddy DeVito, where they play a pair of crime-fighting taxis. Did you just say Daddy DeVito? Danny DeVito. You know, and, and they show up and they, they do really well in the parts that they're in. And you can see the acting is done really well. I think even Adam Sandler, as annoying as his character is and can be, I think it's it, it's done with intent and it's mm-hmm. done well. And it's, you know, there's a lot that's showcased through through emotion and through acting and through facial expressions and those kinds of things and less through dialogue, which uh, I I appreciated a lot more at this point in the film. You only know this guy is the dude he owes money to. And it it really comes across as like, he's the mob boss and he's got the goons coming after him. You've you've met the goons, the goons have been around, but they're in the car. It's when they strip him and put him in the trunk. Mm -hmm. Um, There's some, interactions with those two that have a lot more meaning a little bit later in the film when they reveal that that's his brother-in-law. So it's, he's not this mob boss. He's his brother-in-law. They're, they're at, at, uh, at dinner, a family dinner together. And so there's some scenes where, where they're looking at each other and they're responding. And there's, there's a look in his face where it's like, there's more going on there and they really allude to that. And then it does pay off later on. So, you know, they do some of those things really well, but I just, I tried to start enjoying this movie. I just, I just couldn't. I just, it's a film about a scumbag. And it's like, to me, I like, I don't care if he, I, I, I don't like it when the scumbag wins, but I also don't like it when the scumbag loses. Like, to you don't me, feel I would good rather see him, way. I would rather see him turn his life around rather than just keep being a terrible person. So, and there's, there's really, I, I'm trying to think of anything that they show, in the film where he is a good person. I mean, he doesn't have a good relationship with his kids. He, you know, his ex-wife's falling apart. His girlfriend's really, you know, he's got employees that are quitting on him. Uh, He's got random people coming up on the street (laughs) saying that they owe him money and he's doesn't even know who they are kind of things. Yeah. Like that one character with the law. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, nothing was ever developed there, but yeah, it's just like another facet of his life. And, and that's where, I, I expected that character to be the one who shoots him in the end. Like that's, that's where it was. Where to me, it was, yeah, okay, I could see that. it's going to go through this whole thing and he'll, he'll have this revelation. He'll, he'll turn it around or he'll win big and he'll figure out things with his brother-in-law. It'll be good. And then he'll get shot by that dude. Cause he, cause they have him show up time. again at the end. <laughs> yeah. Why is this guy? He's just there to like distract and add tension to the scene, I guess. Mm-hmm. But functionally he does nothing other than, Hey, you owe me money. You gave me a fake watch. Hey, da, 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 da. you know, it's nothing other than that. So I guess like there are a couple of things I can say I liked about it, but overall to me, it's a, uh, I don't, I'll probably forget this film. <laughs> I'll say I would, I did like the leathery old man at the end, the billionaire trying to <laughs> buy his girlfriend, at the, the casino. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did a good job with that one. I think, I think that fits. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, his, I, I'm trying to think of how you, what you'd refer to him as his assistant, uh, his assistant guy, the, the guy, the, the guy with the watches who brings him, yeah, who brings him clients and those mm-hmm. kinds of things. I think I would have kept every single one of those interactions exactly how they went. Like they don't have a good relationship, yeah. right? It's based on business, mm-hmm. but they're He's both there. trying to get one up on yeah. each other and they're, they're both constantly lying to each other. And then when it all kind of, you know, comes to a head, his realization that like most of his watches are gone, all of the actual paperwork. Cause he says, where's the papers, right? So clearly he, they had uh, the papers to authenticate them as, as real watches. It's, it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, is he still just keeping up that lie, which is very possible, but his kind of revenge where he dumps the power aid into the fish tank. Like, it's like, wow, that's a, it's, it's a level of, I don't even know how to describe, like, how do you think of something like that? Like that would never cross my mind in my angriest moment. I would never be like, I'm going to kill your fish with power. I'm going to dump power aid into your fish tank. Like, It's a level of, of revenge that I, you know, I applaud. So, you know, I think it was good to cast the goons, the, the thug, the hitman, the bodyguard, those guys. I think they did a really good job in those roles. But I think they did a good job in those roles because I'd suspect that that's this. This is a, a career change for them. Acting is the the next step after having legitimately been <laughs> thugs in the mob. So I, I felt like they maybe were a little bit too authentic. So so I don't know. I just I did like that. You know, that guy was intense and acted. You know the way. That's the part he would play, you know, if, if he were, he's, he's there to rough people up, right? Mm-hmm. He's not there to listen to the lies. He knows all the BS. He knows everything's coming out is, you know, so I, I think that was good. But there's a lot of negative with this film. To me, like this, the cinematography, it, it fit the chaotic style and the chaotic nature of the characters. It's the same with the dialogue options, those kinds of things. I just, I found that I didn't want to necessarily watch anything that was going on. Um like I, I really wanted to just like let's get through this and let's let's just be done with it. Like, I I, I kind of know where this is going and let's just get there. Let's stop continually showing how bad of a person this guy is. We've established it. Let's let's move the story forward. So but that's that's all. That's the entire story. Yeah, but that that is the story. <laughs> is every interaction he has is you know yeah, and every decision he makes is a poor decision. Like yeah, he's his worst enemy. Yeah, his um, worst enemy. I, even the things that you would think, oh, this would be a cool thing to do, like when he shows Kevin Garnett the stone. It's like, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> like, yeah. you've been, this this hinges this hinges on you getting that to where it needs to go. You taking the time to get it appraised on your own. You doing all of these kinds of things, and you're just like, oh yeah, you know what? He I will totally let you borrow it for you know. But what? almost if it, I, I, I think that's more of like a glimpse into him as a person because yeah. my guess is he's like, well, okay. If I let him like borrow it, like I'm going to like get in good with him. Right. Yeah. And so and I'm going to yeah. have some reward. So I'm going to let him yeah. take it because it's not going to cost me any money. Uh, assuming oh, yeah. he gets no, it I, back. And so yeah. I think that's, that's just showing into like what he's thinking, like what he's going to yeah. get in I, return. And I, I think that's the biggest negative to me is this film really uh, reminds me of someone I know personally who is that, who would uh, trip over the dollar to pick up the quarter kind of a thing because mm-hmm. they're always trying to think of the next play and not finishing what's there. Like, And even then, he, him thinking that the, the stone is he's going to get millions for it at auction, it's like, well, you're probably not. Even if it wasn't reevaluated poorly it you know somebody's not going to pay if it's worth a million dollars somebody's not going to pay a million dollars for it they're you know mm-hmm. because they want the investment in it so they don't want to dump too much money into it so but yeah just just having seen that that, that you know this character struck very close to me with people i know or you should say a person i know and just the stupid decisions that they make and that, that you, you hit right on the head where that's it's it's that window into who he is where he's like oh hey this is a big famous person i can get a lot from this person yep. not that this person's going to you know be taking advantage of me even unintentionally but just the logistics around a famous person mm-hmm. 
especially an NBA player during the finals, like there's no way you're going to get that back in time. And you're going to trust a, a person, you know, already know to be untrustworthy because you help you, you store his uh, fake Rolexes so that he can try and sell them. And while you're there, you're insulting him. It's just like, you know, stupid decision after stupid decision after stupid decision professionally and personally. And just, I don't know. It, it, that's, I think the, the nexus of my dislike for this film. It's too, too real for me. So, <laughs> so the first big dislike is he is basically a scumbag, but he doesn't even care about his family. Like his children, for instance, because there's the scene where he, it's right after he makes the bet and he's sitting on the couch trying to like watch the game. And his estranged wife, I was going to say ex-wife, but his estranged wife says, you need to, you know, say goodnight to your boy. But he's not even listening. He doesn't even care. Yeah. And even when he goes up there, he's laying on the floor watching the game, I guess, on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> it just he doesn't care about his family. And it's. I get, I get, I get that that's what this movie is, that it's mm -hmm. the day in the life of a scumbag, basically. But you, you have no redeeming qualities for him. And so then you just, you don't feel the care of, oh man, he died at the end. Okay. He was a douchebag. We move on with our day. So I, I didn't like, I didn't like that there was no redeeming qualities for him. No... Even if it was like, like a small little, like he's a douchebag to everyone else, but to his children or to his family, he goes above and beyond for them. Okay, it, it gives you a hum, human element to him instead of what he was. So that that's the first dislike. The second dislike, how stupid can he be to pawn or loan other people's jewelry are you kidding me? The fact that he takes Kevin Garnett's uh, 2008 championship ring and goes <laughs> down to a pawn shop and says, here, I want money. Here's the ring, you know, things like that. Are you kidding me? Especially when it's Kevin Garnett, he's going to come back for his ring, but <laughs> you don't have his ring. And now what? Or the Michael Jackson cross where he or was in a any, club. A any of the watches that he just he does put up some fight when they're, but he freely gives them away. Those aren't his, they're, you know, an associates mm -hmm. as well. Like, and I get it's to feed, he needs money. He needs to, I guess, essentially feed his gambling addiction. Well, this thing it, it is that gambling addiction. And that's where it's, it's, it's the frustrating same thing to sit there and watch the, a person struggle. And just like, you know, you're making stupid decision after stupid decision. Like, you know, yeah, and hey, he, I'm going to take this $150,000, $160,000. Instead of paying my debt to the debtor standing in the other room, I'm going to pass it out a window and go make a big bet. Like, yeah, and it's which is strange because the, the only thing he seems to be good at is betting on Kevin Garnett. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, it, it shows how his gambling addiction has basically control completely controls his life um, mm -hmm. with the money that he owes. And it's, it's become basically not just an addiction, but that's the only thing he knows. That's how his life, yeah. he lives his life. Like he doesn't know anything yeah. else. And he's kind of on that kind of perpetual mm -hmm. uh, kind of course to just like try and do whatever he can to just make it to the next day and just yeah. keep moving his steps around. Yeah. It's basically just like and a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the opposite of, of like, cause to think, you know, if it did end the way it ended and he got the, you know, bag full of money, a mil 1.3 million, whatever it was, he's not going to do good with that. Like, he's not going to be like, all right, I'm out. No. I retire. I hit it big. It's like, no, he's going to go and turn that around. You know, he's going to be, it's going to be gone in a week. Yep. Like, you know, he probably isn't going to pay off any of his debts. He's, you know, like not unless he's got a so, gun held to his head. Yeah. And even then, probably not. If he can, he if he can get, his get way around of it. Number three. Watching this, I had a sudden flash to us watching Parasite because all of a sudden 
Kevin Garnett, he wants that rock. He just mm-hmm. has to have that rock. He's obsessed with that rock. And then it apparently gives him good luck or something. And I, as I was thinking about that, I thought, is this like Parasite, except in a more realistic setting where you're given a rock and now your life turns around for the better and you're doing amazing and you're winning games and you're doing so well. Not like I'm trashing on Kevin Garnett's ability as a player in general, but that just is kind of how it came across. Well, well it, it leads more to of, that, the, the, the superstition with yeah, sports. Yeah, that's exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Just the idea surrounding the, the black opal, it just, I felt it was stupid. I'm sorry, people who I, wrote this movie, I felt it was stupid. I wouldn't, I'm not going to disagree because I, yeah, do kind of think that, that is a, a silly thing to think of. But, you know, if it's the thing that, you know, puts him in his right mind, okay, whatever. Like, yeah. Right. Just, I mean, that that's, that yeah. thing is different things for everyone, right? And just in this well, case, and it's, it's it the obsession be... with it's, it's the obsession, uh, obsession with it, as well as the fact that he refuses to give it back. It's not his to keep, but he refuses to give it back. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, uh, he probably couldn't afford a lawyer. But at that point, you walk in with a lawyer and say, dude, you're stealing this well, this amount of money from me, essentially. But hey. he, he also probably can't. I, I don't know. Could he? Because he kind of it seems like he kind of obtained it through illegal means. Oh, right? yeah, like definitely. Was, yeah. So. You think this shady scumbag of a character went the proper routes in getting this heavily coveted black opal? No. Yeah. Are you kidding me? He's <laughs> not, not going to go the proper routes for that. Yeah. Nuggets, do you have anything to add? That- um, so just to, so one thing that was a little weird, uh, it was with his girlfriend, um, Julia. Um, say, so correct. at the end, where where... where like they they kind of broke up and then they got back together and like at that point like she's like weirdly like enthusiastic about everything like with yeah. his future prospects and like she's like going along with everything and making the bet and taking the money and like <sighs> that transition was weird to me um i get it was all just based on emotions and Probably her well, feeling and the fact like she's that she back shows up in that relationship, and so now she's well, just overly happy. The yeah. the fact that she shows up with a tattoo of his name, yeah. like don't you like it? I felt I felt that was kind of uh, stalkerish behavior. It just well, it, seemed really just, like a really sharp change. That stood yeah, out to me. I kind of, I kind of got the feeling that that's more how their relationship goes. Like, like this isn't the first time, sort of a thing. But it is. She kind of treats it that way when she's coming back into work because she works with him, right? Mm-hmm. And she's got a smoothie, and he's like, "Clearly, you were in a rush to get here," and smacks it all out of her head mm-hmm. and knocks it all over. Her. Like that, she's still, yeah. Like oh, they, he still clearly doesn't like her, but she's like, "Okay, I'm, I'm back to being normal," and then. Yeah, and obviously it, it they was, don't have the the best or the most healthy relationship. Yes. Um, yeah. But but that that just seemed weird to me, and I I don't know. It's just one thing that stood out that kind of just kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. And then yeah, so so the ending on uh, <laughs> how he died, like I I didn't like it. Like I didn't. Like I saw it coming and I had I didn't look anything into it. Like you don't lock yeah. like two goons and yeah. yeah, in for an entire NBA game into yeah. a hot glass well, box. box. <laughs> yeah. What when it's over, you don't let them in, in the room. Yeah. You let them out the room and yeah. say, Great, I'll get the money to you guys, right? Yeah. Like, like especially where he's he knows he's not gonna give them the money, like and they're gonna be pissed off enough that they're just going to leave mm-hmm. and he's gonna sit in there safe. But yeah, it's another one of those just dumb decisions dumb after dumb decision mm-hmm. after dumb decision. And yeah. Are we and getting into the change department? Because I have some thoughts on that. Cause let me let me clarify. When I said that I liked the end scene, I liked the fact that they did kill, they took away what he spent the The whole movie trying to get. They took it away from him. 
Yeah. And I felt that almost to be justice, but at the same time, realistic. Because you don't always get what you want. You don't always get what you strive for. Well, However, I mean, and that's, that's, yeah, that's the point of the movie, right? It's, yeah. yeah. However, if you try some plans, what I just might find. You can't find you, you get find. what you need. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> However, what I don't like is what you guys had already kind of mentioned. And this is what I would change. Kill him off. Do it smart. Because you, it, logically, you just pissed off these hitmen or gangsters or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call them. You've pissed them off to the point that whether or not they kill you, they're going to beat the crap out of you. And so you don't let them back into your room. You don't yeah. do that. And well, and the, it, it falls in line with the idea of Howard because throughout the whole movie, he's a douchebag. You don't like him. He's treating people poorly. He's doing all these shady business deals, whatever. So if you changed it to give him some redeeming quality or redeeming qualities or Mm -hmm. however you do it, then you feel a little bit more for this character to when he actually dies. You you have more feel to it instead of, well, uh, Well, he kind of had it coming with how he was doing it. And even his brother-in-law where... You you you're stupid enough to hire these people to act as your goons, your hired muscle, yeah. and you don't know anything about them to the point that you realize, oh well, maybe I made this big mistake, and you killed my brother-in-law, and now I'm going to try to escape, but then they're going to sh- they they shoot what? Well, I'm going to try to escape uh, through smart the door decisions. I know is locked that I can't open up without being buzzed in and out. Uh, like yeah, the, the, that's something else that's interesting as well. How are they going to get out with all the st- stolen f- jewelry? Who's going to stay behind to, to let one dude out? I mean, he does have keys on, to get in and out, but, you know, are they smart enough to know that or to figure that out or to find and know which key is which and those kinds of things? But it's, yeah. yeah. But, to, you know, for them, to have some resolution between him and his brother-in-law where it's like, Oh, Hey, you are going to win big and we are, this is going to be great. And you know, have some, maybe have him, you know, a uh, conflict there where his brother-in-law is, you know, teaching him a lesson. No, you've got to stop doing these kinds of things. But yeah. That doesn't happen. And so for the goons, the goons are the only ones who make the logical choice from their perspective, whether the, he wins big in the, uh, with the game or not, they're going to get paid the same. Like nothing's going to change for them and they've just mm-hmm. been tortured. And so their best course of action as criminals is to shoot them both in the face and steal all the diamonds in the room. <laughs> like, yeah, they come out ahead in that situation because, you know, they, yeah. But yeah. That is one of those things that I would have changed is maybe have that, that resolution between, you know, the have something, you know, his, his, yeah. brother-in-law realizes that oh no you you know you are going to hit it big and maybe that this will be the thing you know now that you have this you can settle these debts and you can start being a better person and you know there's there's that resolution but it really doesn't come across that like he's like wait i'm gonna get paid like this is awesome this is great like you know that's kind of seems like the only thing that he cares about in that moment is that that he's getting he's, his money back he, he's gonna get his money back like and so but yeah i also would have changed like i said the crazy guy in the street, which I think he had a cast on his hand in the, the final scene. Like I would have made that the person who, you know, somebody else who's been around the entire movie, but that's just been kind of a nobody to the point that you don't expect that's the person who's going to do it. So after you've, we've gone through this entire journey where he has changed, like, I almost think like if like he were to change or have some revelation and like see the light, yeah. like that would have been weird too. Um, yeah. I would almost say I would have set up the office for a way for him to get out, like a fire escape, um, and just left There's them. There's a way out, just out the window. Left on, them in the room, yeah. escaped out, and then took the money and left. Like, yeah. that's how I would have ended it. He's still a terrible person. Just, it ends with him being a yeah. terrible person. And he's a terrible person that yeah. got away with the money. Yeah. See that? Yeah, to me, like I don't, I don't like that ending any more than I like the ending that was there. Like you know, oh, he's a scumbag and he wins versus he's in a scumbag and he loses. Like I don't, you know, to me, it's like ah, I don't really, you know, 
you know, it's like, this is a part of society that I avoid because, <laughs> you know, the, the very reasons that they're there. So just something different with that. I did appreciate the fact that as soon as the door was open, the, the goon walked in and shot him in the face. Like there was no fuss Hesitation. or fuss. Like, yeah. He'd been sitting there the entire time, just stewing, mm-hmm. plotting this. As soon as, you know, as soon as this door opens, I'm shooting him in the face. Like this well, guy's been even, sitting there for three even hours up to thinking it. this. So yeah. yeah, even leading up to, it, he's like, "All right, you know, you've won. You know, let us out. Yeah. You know, all that." He doesn't. He doesn't show yeah. anger at that point to mm-hmm. where he walks in and just shoots him, just yeah. nonchalantly. Just, there he's, you go. He's been planning it. <laughs> three hours yeah. <laughs> so he, yeah. he's well there <laughs> the motions were gone by that point he just he had his yeah. plan and he was gonna do it i don't know that's the other thing like things i would change i would have changed a lot of his interactions with family like because this thing is there's there's a lot of people who he takes advantage of who are people he would have taken a, a lot of advantage of like right his father-in-law can clearly pay a two hundred thousand dollars for a or 190, whatever it was for the Opal at auction, right? Like he's got money. He, he's, he's well to do. So there's no, he, there would have been a, a long history with this character of, of him taking advantage of his father-in-law um, through other, you know, business deals and those kinds of things to where his father-in-law wouldn't have gone along with it. Right. Like that's a bridge that all, he would have burned just like he did with his brother-in-law. Yeah. Like it's hard to believe that, that hadn't already happened to me. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. There were so many things in this movie that I was just like, I, I would take just half a dozen individual scenes and just remove them or change them. Like uh, when he wins the first bet or thinks he won the first bet and he, he goes to, he gets back to the apartment before his girlfriend and then he hides in the closet, you know, while she gets home. Weird. Like, what is this whole scene? Like what? I get that you want to hop out and scare her. I, you're good, but why are you texting her back and forth and getting her to send you pictures while you're looking at her through the clock? Like, just okay. He's, like, you're he's just getting a, her all hot and bothered. And he's, getting, is, you're just, he's getting her ready for when he jumps out and surprises. Yeah, I just you know, it's just it does add to the scumbag factor of him, you know, across the board. But yeah, I yeah, I didn't understand the girlfriend too. Like, I, I thought they were two different people. Like, uh, yeah, I didn't realize That's that it was like, too. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a like, bit. and even after like the whole scene with the weekend at the club, um, like I was like, is that her? Is that the same girl or is that a different one? Like, yeah. I don't know who it, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm confused by all of this. Like, I'm just, I don't, I don't even know. And yeah, so, and I think as usual with a lot of movies we watch, I'd cut out 20 minutes at least. Like, it seems like editors have directors have the last 10 years or so have gotten really comfortable with pushing run times on films. I wonder if that's as we move into streaming services. Um, I know there's a yeah. little more flexibility. And so yeah. if those are, that's, it's becoming more common because of that. Well, and if a movie flows well, it can be as long as it needs to be. I'm going to take the uh, monkey feathers approach and say, you know what? You should see it, make up your own mind. I'm not going to give you my opinion on it, but hey, no, I, it's on Netflix and it's, it's on free. Netflix. Well, so it's, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not going to cost you Netflix anything more than you're already paying. So, yes. So uh, if anything, you can watch the movie and tell us how wrong we are and our opinions and that, you know, it's your yeah, favorite like, movie in the world. It It's a strange thing where I think that they set out to make a really good, from they did very well in this movie. The acting's good, the directing's good, the writing's good. I just don't like anything about this movie. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I guess we'll end it there unless anybody wants to keep beating a dead horse. And uh, yeah, comments down below, all those fun things. Um, stay tuned for more, and we'll keep doing them. Adios. See ya.